You won't believe this news, guys. President-elect Donald Trump will be meeting with Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong to talk about different crypto positions and appointments in the government. And Donald Trump's social media company is looking to acquire crypto trading platform backed. And Bitcoin ETF options have been approved. They go live tomorrow. This is huge. And Goldman Sachs is expanding its crypto business. I'll give you the details. Let's get into it. Hey, everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. Folks, let's start with Bitcoin. Right now, Bitcoin is still consolidating. We're waiting for that breakout upwards, and I think we could potentially see 100,000 by Thanksgiving. That's a thesis I have. It could be completely wrong, but I think the Bitcoin whales want to get Bitcoin to a price before Thanksgiving, where the discussion around Thanksgiving dinner will be all about crypto. And we've seen this show before retail will start to pour in. Now, we are seeing some level of retail activity with Google Trends searches up for Bitcoin, crypto, XRP, meme coins, and these things. And obviously, the market has been moving. So it runs in phases, but we haven't seen the full on euphoria where things get crazy and stupid, right? Uh, if you've been here for multiple bull market cycles, you know what I'm talking about. But of course, we are in the midst of a bull market. And just look at this, guys. I often share different metrics and stats with you. Today, there was two billion in Tether USDT minted and over 200 million in Circle USD minted. So where is that liquidity going to go? Into the crypto market. So we've seen this. I've shared this with you guys for years. And what we've been noticing is once there's some sort of mint event, eventually you have uh, the liquidity poured into the market and then it starts ripping. So get ready. Now, we have some very big news around Donald Trump and what he's doing with crypto. First up, Coinbase CEO to meet Trump to discuss personal appointments. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. Here are the details. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong is meeting with President-elect Donald Trump to discuss personal appointments. Trump has yet to pick who he wants to nominate as Treasury Secretary and chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission, both of which would have major implications for the crypto industry. There's a name being floated around uh, for Treasury, and that is Brian Brooks, who we know is very pro-crypto. He was at the OCC, and I hope he gets it. If he goes into the SEC or at the Treasury, it will be a win. Now, with regards to the SEC, there's uh, quite a few names that have been thrown into the mix. And um, I know Hester Peirce would be the ideal candidate, but it doesn't sound like she wants the job. Uh, however, Dan Gallagher, uh, who's at Robinhood, uh, who's a former SEC official, uh, he might be a great choice. So we'll have to wait and see. But we know we're headed to brighter days. We're headed to where more people who are pro crypto are going to be put into the government. So things are heating up, guys. And look at this. Donald Trump's social media company in talks to buy backed in the latest twist for the ICE founded crypto platform. So ICE stands for Intercontinental Exchange. Now the Intercontinental Exchange owns the New York Stock Exchange. And remember, this was a big thing back in 2018, 2019 when they launched backed. However, due to some poor management and some other things, it kind of phased out. They fizzled out, uh, even though they had this hype around them because of who was backed them. But this is interesting that Trump's social media company is looking to buy <laughs> this platform. It's uh, I'm very curious what Trump is trying to cook up here. So Donald Trump's social media company Truth Social is reportedly in advanced talks to acquire a story crypto platform back, according to the Financial Times, citing two people familiar with the matter. Now, obviously, there's World Liberty Financial, which was started uh, by Trump's team and so forth, and they may be looking to do more with crypto. So very interesting, guys. Things are really heating up. Now, we got big news that the OCC, which was the final hurdle for options trading for Bitcoin ETFs, has been approved. And specifically, it's been approved for BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin ETF or IBIT. And uh, there's news, there's confirmation that the NASDAQ is going to list this as soon as tomorrow. Now, we've been talking about this. I've done interviews with uh, Nate Geraci, the people from Bloomberg as well. Options are going to bring in a ton of liquidity 
and capital into this market. So this could be the catalyst that helps us to go to 100K plus. And of course, look who's getting the first win here, and that is BlackRock, right? BlackRock's trying to take over this asset class, and you know if they're backing something, we've seen historically, whether it's ESG or whatever else, there's going to be a lot of capital following BlackRock because BlackRock is connected to the government in many different ways. Go look at what they did in the 2008 crash. They are the world's largest asset manager. Need I say more? Right, guys? You know the deal. Larry Fink's going to get what he wants here. So I'm here for the ride. I'm going to ride the wave. And this is going to be very impactful on Bitcoin's price in the crypto market. And there was confirmation of this. The folks at BlockWorks got a confirmation from a NASDAQ spokesperson. And they're planning to list the options tomorrow. So get ready, guys. Tomorrow could be pretty big. Now, we got some news around billionaire Paul Tudor Jones Hedge Fund. They apparently hold $230 million worth of BlackRock's Bitcoin spot ETF. We know Paul Tudor Jones is very bullish on Bitcoin and crypto. He has been since 2020. And we are getting more details through SEC filings of his holdings and positions. But uh, pretty huge, right? But look where he's buying it from BlackRock. So this is what I'm talking about. A lot of people trust BlackRock. BlackRock's going to market the hell out of this asset class. Larry Fink, watch out. He's going to pop up on TV again pretty soon. You know the story, guys, right? But this is where we as smart investors have been buying the dips, buying the lows, and we are looking to sell the euphoric blow up top. Because unfortunately, dumb money comes in at the top. They're not financially educated. They haven't done their research. They don't buy the dips, right? They move with the herd, but uh, that's the nature of markets. But this is why you want to be on the side of smart money, along with Paul Tudor Jones and Larry Fink, okay? You want to leave your emotions at the door. You want to study the charts and know what's happening. Now, Michael Saylor announced today that the MicroStrategy acquired more Bitcoin. In fact, they bought 51,780 Bitcoin for approximately $4.6 billion at a price of approximately $88,627, which is, this is crazy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I can't even keep up with all the things that uh, Sailor is doing here. And uh, they're going to do a private offering of $1.7 billion of convertible senior notes. So raising more debt to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> this is wild, guys. But it's going to pay off for him. We've crossed the chasm and Bitcoin's gone mainstream. TradFi's here, the po politicians are behind it. Now uh, there's possibly Bitcoin becoming a strategic reserve asset in the United States. So things are moving at a nice pace. Um, Brian Brooks, which we talked about earlier, is tweeted out about Bitcoin. He says, strong alignment with the U.S. Treasury and the SEC on issues like Bitcoin reserve will be critical. We need to make America the capital of capital formation again. So guys, I hope you see where this thing is headed. The narratives are there. Wall Street's here. The politicians are here. So strap in. Things are going to get really fun, <laughs> but have that plan for taking profits. So a great place where you can take profits is on Gemini. You can, of course, buy Bitcoin and altcoins. Gemini is a great exchange. I've been using them for years. They have a great app, great platform. They have a credit card. They have staking. They have a stable coin called GUSD. And if you sign up using my link, guys, you can get $15 in Bitcoin when you trade your first $100. You can use the code THINKING15. So check out the link in the description and go sign up with Gemini. Now, guys, all of Wall Street wants a part of this asset class. And here we got news from uh, Bloomberg. Goldman Sachs is speaking with potential partners as it plans to spin out its digital assets platform into a new company for large financial firms to create, trade, and settle financial instruments via blockchain technology. Folks, game theory is playing out here. No one wants to get left behind. They're going to launch crypto trading products, whether it's ETFs and trading desks, and they're also going to do tokenization. So everything will be running on the blockchain. It's what we've been talking about for years. Uh, traditional assets like stocks and commodities will be on the blockchain, and uh, there will be 24-7 trading, fractionalization, uh, a truly global market, guys. So very, very bullish. So the investment bank is speaking to potential partners to add the platform's capabilities and develop new offerings. Matthew McDermott, Goldman's global head of digital assets, told Bloomberg, Trade Web Markets, an electric trading platform, will reportedly be among the new entity's strategic partners. McDermott said the spin-out is expected to be completed in the next 12 to 18 months pending regulatory approvals. Plans are reportedly still in the early stages. Here's a quote. It's the best interest of the market to have something that is industry owned. So that's essentially Wall Street wants to own this asset class. And uh, it's what I've been telling you guys for a long time. That's why Gensler, a Goldman Sachs guy, was weaponized. 
to kill the crypto startups. Notice BlackRock, Fidelity, and all these guys didn't get lawsuits or Wells notices, yet they launch ETFs, yet they're tokenizing and doing much more, right? Pretty clear as day what's happening. And like I said, eventually they're going to try to manipulate this market like they have with other assets. I don't think we're close to that. I think uh, in maybe in another five to 10 years, that could be possible. However, uh, we want to ride the wave, right? Because we are the early adopters, make as much money as we can, and then exit the market accordingly. Now, I've often stated, my, the caveat to that statement is, is that there are some crypto I'm never selling. I'm holding like Bitcoin because I believe Bitcoin uh, will eventually go into a million dollars one day. So I'm holding it, planning to give to my daughter and, and so on and so forth. So that's my strategy. You don't have to follow that. Um, and I use the altcoins as much as possible to make as much profit as possible because I'm trying to get financial freedom for myself, as I'm sure many of you eliminate debt, upgrade, spend and buy things, of course, and build up my retirement, guys, because I want to retire as early as possible. So those are my goals, and uh, I'm going to be here for the next cycle. So I've often stated I'll be taking some profits, pay off some debt, spend, and then reinvest some of that into crypto and other assets. Um, and grow the pot as much as possible. So I'm looking to squeeze as much juice out of this orange as possible. And um, I'm going to be preparing for the next bull market of the 2028 halving. Now, we continue to see more companies are using Bitcoin and crypto as a hedge against inflation. We got news that global healthcare group Cosmos Health adopts Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. And they're going to be holding Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is not going away. As inflation and currency debasement continues, you're going to see companies around the globe do this. And uh, some have only added Bitcoin, some have added Bitcoin and Ethereum. So uh, this is very interesting to see these different companies do this in different industries. Obviously, MicroStrategy is the biggest example, but there's also MetaPlan out of Japan and many others. And we got countries buying as well. So things are headed in the direction of mass adoption. And as I stated earlier, if the Bitcoin strategic reserve gets approved, you're going to see incredible FOMO for Bitcoin and crypto, guys. It's it's going to open the floodgates. Now, let's talk about Cardano and XRP. We've been highlighting what Charles Hoskinson has been saying on his live streams over the past couple of weeks, and that he wants to work with Ripple. He wants RLUSD, Ripple Stablecoin, to be on Cardano and much more. Well, he tweeted out today, it was great to speak to David Schwartz of Ripple about Midnight and XRP. Wonderful technical conversation. David retweeted him saying, it was a pleasure talking to you. Midnight sounds extremely interesting. And he linked to the Midnight uh, Network white paper. So Charles and I had spoke about Midnight Network a couple months ago when I had him on the podcast. I'm trying to get him back on to talk about these things. But uh, great to see some collaboration, guys. Um, and I think Charles recognizes that it's better to collaborate uh, because he's Cardano's going up against Solana and AVAX and some big players and Ethereum, of course. So if you want to win, you probably have to partner with some of these other chains and uh, build some interoperability so that you can continue to grow in market share. So I see this as a very smart move by Charles. Now, he also added some additional context in a live stream where he said, we can add amazing DeFi components to XRP. They can add liquidity, a wonderful stablecoin layer, uh, RLUSD, and Bridges. Definitely, it would be super cool to get Midnight working with XRP. We're meeting with David Schwartz. Yada. So uh, great to see that this is happening, guys. Very bullish. Uh, I hold both XRP and Cardano. My larger position is in XRP, but both have been doing well on the charts, guys. We know XRP has been breaking out all coins have been breaking out it's what i've been saying be patient some of these blue chip all coins will take time i think meme coins are the shiny bait that's to bring in retail but the liquidity flows through the entire market final news item here binance is jumping back into the stablecoin game so binance launches stablecoin bfusd if you recall they had busd but that got shut down but in new york dfs um, it says here the yield bearing stablecoin can also be used as collateral for trading and borrowing. Smart move by Binance. They have the world's largest exchange. They got the brand. It's a no brainer, right, to do this. And they're going to make a good amount of money on this. And if you haven't seen my interview with Charles Cascarilla of Paxos, I published it today. They actually helped uh, Binance to launch their first stablecoin. Uh, they helped PayPal to launch PYUSD. And they also helped Robinhood, Kraken Exchange, and so forth to launch a community stablecoin called Global Dollar Network. 
check that out, guys. It's a great interview. And these are the people building and helping these big firms to um, create these amazing tokens and services and so forth. So, folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. A great way you can support me and the podcast is by subscribing to my free email newsletter on Substack. The link will be in the description. 100% free. Also, be sure to grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto. Uh, buy a copy for yourself and your friends and family. Give it as a gift this holiday. Help them to learn about crypto. The book will help them to learn about it. It provides tips for investing in crypto. It talks about the past, present, and future of crypto. So it could be a really great place for them to get educated because you know a lot of people are going to FOMO in and get wrecked. Don't let your family members get wrecked. Give them the book. Help them to learn about it. There's a digital copy. There's paperback copy. And if you bought a copy already, guys, please leave a rating and review on Amazon. It will really help me out. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.